Okay, folks, so continuing along.、Um, so, I generally like to skip way ahead to section 17.10 at the end of our chapter in this kind of introductory part of the material.、Um, so, I, I think it's nice to start talking about entropy, which we have right here,、um, and really getting into that fundamental detail of what entropy is. So that we can connect it to spontaneity. Okay, so here you can see our first definition for entropy the driving force for spontaneity and generally all thermodynamic processes. And so it's generally thought of a measure of disorder, but that's not totally correct. Okay, all the same, the classic kind of view of entropy is you can imagine this messy college dorm room, right? Um, well, we could think of it as having a lot of entropy. So, lots of entropy. Or, in other words, there's lots of disorder going on in that messy college dorm room. And that's an okay definition as we're kind of starting to understand entropy. But right away, and this is why I want to take us into、um, this section 17.10, the actual correct Definition of entropy is the number of arrangements available to a system existing in a given state. What is all of that? Well, this number of arrangements, we're going to call those microstates. And we're going to flush that out in more detail here momentarily.、Um, and then we have a very famous equation for entropy given by a capital letter S. Um, and this equation is given by、um, Ludwig Boltzmann, a very famous scientist. And in fact, on his tombstone, we can see his equation right there k log w. Okay, S equals k log w.、Um, and that you can go see that in Vienna、um, if you're ever visiting there. Okay.、Um, I heard my neighbor's car horn <laughs> going off. That's probably going to come through the video. We're just going to keep it going. Um, so, um, the fact that we're using the natural log version is, is okay. This says log log. Don't worry about that too much. This is the version of this equation we're going to use. So, what does all this mean? Well, this w is this number of microstates. So, the number of unique ways we can arrange something. Okay. And so, we take the natural log of that number, multiply it by the gas constant, and that actually gives us a numerical value of entropy. All right. And so if we think about the units, what units are we using? Well, we're going to use the 8.314 joule per mole K flavor for R. And so we note here that now S has to have the same units as that version of R. So the units for entropy are joule per mole per Kelvin. And so hopefully, what you gather from this equation, this entropy or this Disorder, it's going to increase with increasing microstates or more generally arrangements. So, in other words, if we kind of go back to this room here and we think of like all of the ways we could arrange, like this, you know, random purse or whatever, and like this, you know, hanger and all this other junk that's sitting around in there, right? Imagine just all of those different ways we could toss that stuff around the room, okay? Well, if we put that number into this equation, natural log of that number times r, that's going to give us a humongous value of s. And so that tells us lots of entropy, lots of disorder, if you will. Okay? So, continuing along, what are these microstates? So, here's a fun thought、um, experiment to kind of get you thinking about what all these microstates are. So, let's suppose we have this very simple two bulb、uh, flask. So, it's a flask that has like two separate bulbs. And somehow magically, we can put four, just only four molecules in the leftmost bulb, or maybe we could make it three and one, and two and two, and one and three, or zero and four. Suppose we have this ability to do that. Well, if we wanted to count up how many microstates are available in this, we would also need to put labels on these molecules. So, for example, this arrangement number one, suppose we Called the molecule A, B, C, D. I know that's tough, but just imagine you know, we're able to ascribe labels to each of these molecules. Well, that's only going to be one microstate because there's only one way that we can get all four of those molecules in the leftmost bulb. 
And similarly, if we shove all the other, the same four molecules in the rightmost bulb, there's only one way to do that. However, things become more complicated when we have this three in one situation, because now we recognize we've specifically labeled each of these molecules. So for example, we can have a B, D, C, and an A, or we can have an A, C, D, and a B. We can have an A, B, D, and a C, or finally we can have an A, B, C, and a D. All the same, that gives us four microstates just for this three, one arrangement, okay? And as you might imagine, for the one, three arrangement, we also get four microstates. And for the two and two arrangement, if I were to go through all those different permutations, we would have 16 microstates. So in total, if we now think about this, I've got four molecules and two separate like chambers where they can exist. This is gonna give me one plus four plus six plus four plus one. All of that equals 16 different ways that I could arrange this system. Well, what if I had more than just like four molecules, okay? Um, so like, let's say I had a whole bunch. And now we kind of ask another question, right? Um, what would be the probability of even finding all the molecules in the left flask, right? So I looked at this kind of peculiar arrangements like where all of a sudden they're all in the left or maybe they're all in the right flask. What is even the probability of that happening, okay? Well, if we think about this, okay, if there's only one molecule in the entire thing, there's a 50-50 chance it's either in the left flask or, of course, in the right flask. So we could think of that as um, 1 over 2 raised to the first power. And so I get that because the there's two flasks, so 1 over 2, 1 possibility and there's only one molecule so you don't have you're not responsible for this math i'm just kind of showing you where the statistical counting comes from so that's one over two raised to the power one which gives me my 50 percent okay so what about if we had two molecules well we know that there's one of two possible arrangements um, and if there's two molecules i've got to say one over two squared which we know that's going to be one over four which is 25 percent if I kept going with this, it'd be 1 over 2 raised to the 10 power, and that starts getting to be a little bit more complicated, okay? But we can still do that. So I could say um, 2 raised to the power 10 equals 1,024. And now if I do 1 over that number, right, 1 over 2 raised to the power 10, I get some crazy small percent, right? 1, 2... Um, to make it a percentage. So that would be like, you know, 0.01% chance that I would find all 10 of those molecules all of a sudden at the other side. Well, what if there's one mole? <laughs> Not likely that we're going to find one mole of molecules only in one um, flask there. Oh, my pen is messing up. Because as you might guess, our equation is going to go 1 over 2 raised to the power 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power. And that means there are so many possible arrangements in this thing. It would not be impossible, but highly unlikely, very improbable to all of a sudden just spontaneously find all of these molecules on one side. That ain't gonna happen because there are so many of these arrangements. So now going back to our phases, we can finally start to think about this, which phase has the largest entropy and why, which phase has the smallest entropy. Well, if we think about this solid, and now that we've studied solids and crystal structures, we recognize there's, you know, when they're packed together in this arrangement and you can't move any of the atoms around because they're packed in, there is very low entropy right here. Very, very low amounts of entropy in a solid, okay? But in a gas, because now these molecules can move all around, kind of like how we've been talking about in this bulb, in this flask ex uh, thought experiment, um, there is a huge amount of entropy in a gas. And of course, in a liquid, I'll just put that like in the middle, 
But we recognize that liquid is going to have more entropy than a solid, and a gas is going to have more entropy than a liquid. Okay? Uh, more on this in the next videos.